Welcome to our course Digital Design with Verilog. In today's class, we are going to talk about heuristic based switching function minimization, specifically the espresso method. In last three classes, we talked about Carnot map and this coin McCloskey based method to minimize the switching function minimization. And those methods are optimal in the sense uh, if you give a function, it will always give you the minimal expression for that, right. Uh, on the other hand, you can also think about heuristic based approach. Okay. In a heuristic based approach, the basic philosophy is it basically much faster and it may not give you the optimal solution, but it may give you near optimal solution. And many a time, uh, because of this time trade off, uh, we may go for heuristic based approach. And one of the such approach is espresso that we are going to discuss today. So, as I mentioned that the problem with uh, this optimal method like coin McCloskey and this Carnot map, if you recollect what they does, they first find out all the prime implicants. We think about coin McCloskey where we basically put them in a table and then we try to club the adjacent, we group them into based on the number of ones and then we try to compare and club them together to create a bigger cubes, right. And this way we generate all the prime implicants. So, and then from this prime implicants, we try to select uh, this subset using this in prime implicant chart, right, so that we can cover all the ones or the min terms, right. So, the primary bottleneck of this kind of method is that this uh, generation of all prime implicants, okay. This may be very time consuming because the number of prime implicants may be exponential, okay. Conceptually, if you have say n uh, min terms, you can cover them by I mean of many a size, right? It can be of size 2, size 4, size 8 and uh, you can club many ways, right? So, there may be exponential way of covering this ones with uh, different cubes. So, that is why the and you are finding all prime implicants. It is not that we are identifying few of them. So, it means that uh, since the number of prime implicants possible exponential, so it will take lot of time, okay? So, that is the primary bottleneck. And when you have this exponential number of prime implicant and then you think about this using prime implication chart, you try to uh, find out the essential prime implicant, remove the redundant prime implicants and then select the non-essential prime implicants. This also very, very time consuming process, okay. So, uh, consequently this kind of method which is give you exact solution which is good for less number of variables, maybe 10, 15, okay. But whenever the variable number is say 50, 100, it is very difficult or infeasible, it takes exponential number of time to give you optimal solution. So, in this case, this heuristic based uh, solutions are useful, where it never try to find out all prime implicants, okay. What it does, it is basically trying to give you a solution all the time, okay. And then it try to apply various optimizations, various kind of uh, operations to give you another prime solution, okay. So, you keep generating better solution over time. The amount of time you give, it will give you better solution, okay. You can run it for uh, 5 seconds, you can run it for 5 minutes, okay. So, the amount of time you run, it will try to apply various operations and then you try to give you better solution, okay. Uh, so, uh, so, this specifically SPROS is very popular and it is already implemented in uh, logic synthesis tool and which is basically one of the well known heuristic based approach, okay. So, this espresso based on simulated annealing method, okay. So, let us try to explain what is this. So, you think about that you start with the initial solution, okay. In a switching function uh, minimization context, you can think of that uh, your initial mean, the mean terms that present in the functions, they are the implicant and they are basically the uh, solution that you have, okay. Initially, you just have all these ones as the solution. So, that is your starting point, right. So, you can start say from this point and then what you are going to do, you combine 2 1 into 1, you probably take 4 1 into combine into 1 cube, bigger cubes and so on. So, this way you are basically reducing the number of product terms as well as the uh, literals, okay. So, this way you are basically going for optimization. So, your total cost, you can think about this x is basically uh, the cost which is basically the size of your expression, okay. So, if you keep applying various optimization, you are going to reduce the size of the expression 
and you may end up a minimum point if you start from this point say. And uh, after that whatever op optimization you apply you cannot go lower than this because this is the lower minimum right. On the other hand you could have start from some other point say from this point and then you apply this uh, all these operations that you are uh, develop and it will reduce the cost of the switching function it will try to minimize that expression and you may end up getting another minimum ok. So, this minimum is lower than this minimum right. So, this is the global minimum right and this is local minimum. So, in the simulated annealing approach you basically this helps to do this you start from some starting point you try to optimize your cost function it can be um, for switching function minimization it is the cost of the minimal expression and then you get a local point right and once you reach to this local minimum this may be the best solution if you do not want to go further or you can just restart the whole process from some other starting point right which is and then you try to optimize it and if you keep doing it over the time you most of the time you will end up getting this global minimum ok. So, this is what this simulated annealing approach and this espresso does this ok. So, how this espresso works so it will never identify all the prime implicants it will never try to find out the minimal expressions it try to optimize the expression cost ok all the time. So, what it does it start with some initial cover. Uh, so, you can think about uh, that initially suppose you have a, uh, a switching function of say on three variables say x, uh, y and z and then 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1 and say suppose you have this many mean terms there. So, initially you say it may take all this individual mean term as the solution. So, this is your initial cover. What is your objective effectively? You try to cover all this one with minimum number of cubes. You can initially think of your q sub is 1 and individual mean terms are the solution ok. So, that may be the your initial cover. Then it just apply these three op operations expand, redundant and reduce iteratively to improve this uh, solution and if it find out a better solution it will accept other it will just reject ok. And then it do the uh, operations again randomly in different directions and try to reduce. So, it, if it able to reduce this over the time it may end up getting a better solution and most of the time probably say. So, say if you apply uh, probably you get the best solution which is this right. So, uh, this is the best solution for this. So, it will end up having two product term which is y bar is for this particular that 4 literals and this is basically z x right. So, this is the solution the minimum solution that you can obtain from here ok. So, this is the overall process. So, when it stops when it cannot improve the things further or your time is over whatever the time budget you have given it is done. So, let us try to explain all these uh, operations one by one before presenting the final algorithm. So, the first operation is expand. So, what it does it basically uh, you have the initial cover or some cover with you it takes one of this cube in this cover. So, you can think about each of this point is cube right initially it is cube size of 1. So, it will take individual cube and then try to expand over the other one, one term or onset and do not care set right. It will not just expand in the offset, offset in the sense the zeros ok and you can also utilize the do not cares and it will stop when it reach a prime implicant ok. So, the important point here is that you take one of the implicant in the current cover and you keep expanding until you reach a prime implicant ok and then it will stop. So, it is a random process you might choose some arbitrary 5 some k points k implicant and you expand them in any direction, but it will stop only when you reach to the prime implicant right. So, it will stop when this become a prime implicant ok. So, let me explain this with uh, an example say I have this initial function a function which has these many mean terms are there the all the ones and initially say I have these are the cover individual terms are the cover for me and then say it try to expand. So, let us say it picked up this particular implicant 
of this particular function and try to expand. So, it can expand in three direction either in x direction, either in y direction or z direction. So, if you look into this Carnot map, x direction means what? It is x equal to 0, it will go to x equal to 1. So, it will basically expand to this, right? If, if it is try to expand in y direction, so it is uh, y is 0 here, y is 1 here, so it will expand like this, right? And if it is try to expand in z direction, so then z is 0 here, z is 1 here, so it will try to expand this way, it will expand this way. Okay. So, there are three way you can expand, there are three direction. Okay. So, that three direction is x, y and z. Right. So, the x direction is already I have talked about. Let me just put it here. So, x direction is this. Right. So, this three way it can expand. Right. And in conceptually if you just visualize the same thing here in a three dimensional space is basically you can expand in three direction. Okay. Suppose, you are here. Right. Suppose you are here, you can expand in this direction, then you will end up getting this is basically x direction, right? Then it will basically combine these two mean term. Remember, it will only can expand through uh, onset or the one and do not cares, okay? Similarly, if it is expand in uh, y direction, then it will expand this, this way, right? This is z direction. So, if it is uh, expand this way, this is. Uh, this will be z direction. So, z direction is this, right? Because z is this, right? And if it is in y direction, then it will be this way, right? So, it will expand like this. But as I mentioned, uh, it will only stop when it reach a prime implicant. So, you see here, if you think about this, the red one, this is a prime implicant, you cannot expand it further, okay? So, if it reach expand in y direction, you will end up getting this. Okay. On the other hand, if you expand this uh, say first z direction, then there is a scope of combining this with this. Right. So, it will expand then x direction. So, there are two way. Right. So, if you, uh, you are in this point, you expand in y direction, you end up getting a product term which is z bar x bar. Right. So, this one. If you start with z direction, you will end up getting this one which is uh, x bar y bar and then you can expand in x direction which is this way. So, it will combine this and this and you will end up getting y bar, right? so which is uh, y is fixed here. Similarly, if you start from this and if you first expand in x direction, you can expand in x direction. That means, you basically first you uh, let me just clean it. Uh, first you expand in this direction, this and this. So, you will end up getting z bar and y bar, right? And then you expand in z direction, then you will get in y bar, which is basically this way, right? So, you will cover basically this and this, right? So, you will end up getting this. So, it does not matter whether you go z bar to x or x to z, you will end up getting the same thing, right. So, but one important point is that if you expand through y direction, you will end up getting a smaller prime implicant, okay. So, it is basically since a random process, you cannot guarantee which prime implicant you are going to obtain after this expand process starting from a implicant point, okay. So, now you think about the next operation which is E redundant. Since once you do this process, you end up having many prime implicant and as a result some of the implicant is become redundant and we have to remove it. Okay. So, this e redundant steps is basically just after this expand process, you apply this e redundant to make sure that you do not have any uh, the redundant implicant in your coverage. Because what I want to maintain? I want to maintain a correct solution all the time. right? So, uh, if you take the example say suppose you expand uh, starting from this point you expand this way. So, then you have two implicants right one is the big size of 2 cube and then 1 cube plus this this right. So, initially you have 4 cubes I am not writing this individual one substar so expand you have this 4 initial one plus one size of 2 cube right and what I found that say suppose this is a this is B, this is C and this is this one is D. 
and this is E right. So, there are 5 individual 1. So, this is A, B, C, D, E and after expansion what I found that uh, you have this A, B, C, D, E plus D. So, that means now your D and E is redundant because they are now getting covered by D the bigger uh, Q. So, the E redundant will remove this 2 ok. And remember that expand I am explaining from only one point, but it will take arbitrary k points and it will expand directions ok. So, there it will as a result there will be many uh, e redundant q's will be there in the solution space ok. So, e redundant just does that ok. And there is one more example of e redundant. So, initially say after expansion you get this uh, coverage where you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 uh, cubes that is covering all the ones for you. And if you see here clearly this one is a redundant one because this is uh, this one is already covered by this one, this one is covered by this cube. So, that means this is basically redundant right. So, when you apply this e redundant step you will basically remove this prime implicant and you will get this one ok. And incidentally for this example this is the minimal one. So, it depends on your application. So, you as I try to mention after application of this expand iterator and, and reduce you may end up getting minimum solution always also in many of the time ok. The last one is the reduce which is uh, basically just opposite of expand. So, you expanded in one direction and uh, you may may not get the best solution in this direction. So, what reduce does is basically reduce uh, a bigger cube to a smaller cube. So, that it gives you the opportunity to expand in different direction when you apply the expand in the next time ok. So, it is basically each implicant is reduced in a smaller one ok and might exit another cover and with fewer terms in fewer literal. So, that means if you expand it in different direction you may form a better cube in future ok. So, this basically create this possibility of obtaining a better solution by expansion in the next step. Okay. So, that is the something it is enabler, it is it does not give you the uh, best solution, but it basically makes sure that you can start in different direction because this heuristic this is a heuristic based method there is no guiding factor that you take this uh, prime implicant not that one when you do the expand it just randomly expand ok. So, after this step obviously because you are reducing things your uh, coverage points are not the prime implicants all the time. So, let me explain with an example. So, suppose initially you have this solution after one uh, expand step and e redundant step ok. So, this is the initial cover and then say I pick this particular cube ok and then I just apply reduce. What will happen? It will basically give you this solution. Since this one is already covered by this prime, it will not keep this into the set, it will only create another implicant of this. So, after reduction, so if you apply reduce, you will end up getting this where your target implicant or prime implicant was this ok. You could have select some other one also, you could have select this one and you can end up getting this solution ok. So, if you select this, this one, you will end up getting the solution which is covering this 2 1, then this 2 1 and then this 2 1 and this one right because you just uh, reduce this particular prime implicant ok. So, again you randomly pick uh, some uh, prime implicant and you reduce it ok. You see here after this if you apply expand you will pick say suppose you pick this one and you apply expand and it will expand say in this direction ok. So, uh, it basically gives you opportunity to grow in other direction ok probably you can keep a track that in which direction it was expanded earlier. So, that you, you will not expand in this direction to uh, reduce the repetition of the same thing ok. Now, after this I will always apply the e redundant step right. So, now you can clearly see that this one is basically e redundant it is cover 2 1 which is already covered by other 2. So, I am going to remove this particular uh, prime implicant and I will get basically the minimal solution right. So, this is the minimal expression. 
So, again it is but initial the ini this is not the minimal one right not minimal. This is also a solution which has 4 terms because each prime implicant is basically result in a term in the final solution, uh, but that was has 4 terms each of them has 2 variables. Now, I got uh, the solution after reduce expand and redundant I got a solution which has 3 term and each of them has 2 uh, literals. So, it is basically 6 literals earlier it was 4 into 2 8 literals ok. So, it reduces the size ok. So, this way this reduce can enable uh, some better solution through expand operation in the next step ok. So, let us now present the espresso. So, what it does? So, suppose your original circuit has this onset means the wherever the mean terms right this is basically the mean terms which is present in this function offset is basically zeros uh, the, uh, the mean uh, basically the point which is basically not present in this particular function and you also have the do not care set ok. So, do not care is basically you may or may not consider in your optimization you will consider only if improve the performance ok. Then what it does it is basically start with the only ones and the offset r and expand ok it expand and it will give you some coverage f ok. So, and then what it does it basically obviously after expansion you have to apply the e redundant to reduce the remove the redundant cubes I have already explained. So, you have a better solution now ok. Then there are two loops this is the loop 1 and this is the second loop right this is the loop 1 and this is the loop 2. And so, let us explain the initial loops. So, what it does so, since you have already applied expand and redundant you now should apply reduce to reduce some of the q so that I can expand in different directions. So, it is first apply reduce then it will expand and then it will do e redundant ok. So, this way it will basically get another solution ok. So, it will basically initially you f is one solution after reduce it is not the full coverage. So, you then expand you add few more prime implicants and then you remove the redundant one. So, you have one more solution. So, then obviously, if this uh, after this uh, cost it your cost may increase or decrease. So, I will just basically keep it if uh, it is improved otherwise I will just uh, do this same process until I, I am not able to optimize further ok. So, if the cost is stable means uh, I am keep doing operation into successive iteration, but my cost is not getting reduced ok. So, then I will basically stop. So, that means I got a some minimum that may be local or global ok. Now, what I will do now as I mentioned earlier. So, if you I do not know what was my starting point. Uh, so, the solution the minimum solution the stable solution that I obtain it may not be the global minimum it may be the local minimum. So, I should part up the solution I should add certain new prime implicants and then I will do the same process I uh, will so that my my starting point may be some different points now ok and then I will do the same process again. So, that is what it does here reduce gaps expand gaps and e redundant ok. So, after that so you basically add few more things into the your solution. So, you basically started from this point this point you got this solution which is the local minimum right. Now, you part up this and you probably create a point here ok. So, that if you now start doing this probably you will reach up this here. Okay. So, there is no guarantee that you create a point here you may all again create a point here you will again end up getting this same solution, but uh, there is always a good chance that you add some randomness. So, you may end up getting another point from where if you start here you will end up getting this global solution. Right. So, this is what is being done here and then you go back again here and then you do the same process until you get a best solution or local minimum right. So, this process is being done up to your time budget once your time is off you will stop it ok. You can understand that you can stop any time. So, you just do this probably say 5 times and then you stop because your time is off. So, whenever your time is off you basically stop and you also have a you always have a good solution because you always keep the good solution with you. You can see here that f is your good solution and you are creating a g when you do this reduce gas and expand gas right. And then you are combining f and g and you find a better solution 
okay so it's basically you add this g is some few more new prime implicants and then you basically identify a redundant coverage uh, from f which is the best of solution with me now and with g okay and then i'll do the i'll come back here and do the reduce expand redundant i'll keep doing this okay so just to explain what is this reduce and gaps reduce gaps and expand gaps so basically uh, what it does so it will take a cube in f and add those sub cubes that are not covered by other cubes okay so if i take an example so suppose this is my one solution i obtain after this step right so after completion of this loop i got this solution okay so this is my solution after one iteration and then i'll apply this reduce gaps okay so then i'll apply the reduce gaps operation so what i'll do here for each cube in f i'll add those sub cubes that are not covered by anybody else okay any other cubes okay so i also use the don't care to ensure new sub cubes are not produced just by some dc node you have to make sure that you do not have any only cube with don't care nodes okay so if i take this example so it will add what so if you take this cube it will add this implicant now because this two one is covered by other cubes if i take this cube uh, it will basically add this one right because it basically add a cube which the one is not covered by anybody else similarly if i take this cube it will basically add this one and this one because they have not covered by anybody if i take this one it will add a prime implicant this okay so it you understand that the, all the black one is already there this is my best solution now i add certain implicant which is the red one okay basically it will uh, your reduce gaps does it will create a g of all this red implicants okay because those are the ones which is not covered by any other cubes okay and then uh, what it does it basically now apply this expand gaps is basically nothing but uh, doing this expand operation right so add a sub cubes and add them to cover another cube okay so what it does is now so i can start with this red points and i'll create few more prime implicant okay because this reds are not the prime implicants but uh, this uh, expand operation always create a prime implicant so suppose i start with this i'll create this is one from prime implicant i start with this and i'll create this prime implicant from here i cannot create much so this will be remain there so now you think about your new solution has this reds and blues okay and then your uh, and the blacks okay so because what i do here so i have f is the black one the g one is the the new one blue and uh, this uh, black one uh, blue and the red one right so now here i'll apply the irredundant okay so after doing this if i just apply this irredundant i probably uh, get this solution okay i'll keep this black this blue and this blue and this is the minimum solution right so what it basically try to say that if you basically uh, part of this uh, current solution and create some random new prime implicants and you try to combine with the current solution you may get end up getting a minimum solution okay so this is how this uh, uh, reduce gaps and expand gaps helps to reach to a different solutions in subsequent equations sub subsequent iterations okay so i hope you understand this espresso uh, you can understand here that i never create identify all prime implicants i never identify essential one nothing right i'm just doing this identify new prime implicants it is always have a very minimal set of prime implicants okay and i try to cover my one set or the ones with those available prime implicants with me at this point of time and that is my best solution okay if i have better prime implicants i'll have a better solution and over the time i try to reach to some try to generate some new better prime implicant so that i have a better coverage okay so over the time the your uh, your solution will improve okay so just to conclude this this is called any time algorithm because your solution is always ready so whatever your time budget you will get a solution it is not true for carnot map or coin maklowski you have to run the entire thing then only you will get a better best solution but here you have always have a solution and if you bit more time you have a better solution okay so this algorithm successively generate new covers until no further improvement is possible so over the time it will give you better solutions okay most of the time it give you near optimal solutions okay 
and most importantly this can handle very large circuit up to 10,000 literals, 100 inputs, 100 outputs and in uh, 15 minutes. Okay? So, this is basically a practical approach. Okay? I hope you understand the concept of heuristic based uh, switching function minimization which is completely different from the philosophy of uh, exact methods and uh, uh, exact methods. So, with this I conclude today's presentation. Thank you. Mm -hmm.